Welcome to the Fashioning My Faith podcast for women by women. I'm Erica Cantrell. And again today, for the fourth time, we have special guest Elena Stiles to close up the last piece of our influencer series. And so we've talked about balancing young life. We've talked about how we can be influenced without knowing. We can talk about how we influence others without knowing. And today, finishing out, we're talking about my Christian influence. So this is purposeful influencing. This is hardcore, just teaching and reaching others and our influence in that aspect as Christians. And so you can't talk about this topic without first discussing the salt and light passages in Matthew chapter five. And so that's where we're going to start out Matthew chapter five, verses 13 through 16. And it says, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? Is it then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men? You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And we've talked about that verse 16 throughout this series. And it's so important that we let our light shine and we use our Christian influence. And so letting that sink in, we're going to discuss two main sections with some examples of things that hurt our Christian influence and things that help or build our Christian influence. And so Elena's going to start us out with things that hurt our Christian influence. Um, for me personally, um, I get easily frustrated and that is one thing that can hurt me as a Christian, when I'm trying to influence others, you know, when people come to me and they need help with something, I become easily frustrated if they're like, you know, I don't believe this, you know, I, I get frustrated. I'm like, no, this is what the Bible says. But I've got to learn to be, you know, patient with them and, you know, be understanding. And then that leads on to me also, also struggling with my patience. I've just got to learn to like, slow down, listen, give them time to learn and grow and just be patient with them. And then also falling into temptations of the world. It's very easy to fall into temptations when you're surrounded by worldly things. And it does hurt me like influencing others if I'm falling into temptations. And so I want to read a verse. It's Romans 6 verse 23 and it says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So this is just talking about, you know, if we do fall into these temptations, we're going to go to hell. But if we put God first, you know, we'll receive eternal life. So it's just important to, you know, be patient, don't get frustrated, and stay away from the temptations of the world. And that's a big key because if someone comes to us, and you never know which phase of life someone may be in when they're ready to accept God into their life. And so if they get there and they're like, I think I'm ready. And we may be rushing around to do something else. And we're like, okay, let's talk another time. That may lose their opportunity. Yeah. We may be a barrier rather than being beneficial into their journey mm -hmm. as a Christian. So that's where that patience comes in a we lot at as well. We just have to make time, you know, even if like we're busy and we think we don't have the time. You know, we might lose a soul if we don't make the time to, you know, help them out. Mm -hmm. And so I have a few more examples to add on with Elena, uh, things that hurt our Christian influence. And we're going to start out with blowing up in discussions and anger. And she talked about being easily frustrated. But if we do have those conversations with people and then we blow up just at the first thing, if they're like, I just don't know if I believe that. And instead of being patient, we decide to just, well, you should bye. Like that's not going to help anybody. That's not going to save anybody's soul. And so let's look at that with second Timothy chapter two, second Timothy chapter two, verse 14. It says, remind them of these things, charging them before the Lord, not to strive about words, to no profit, to ruin, to the ruin of the hearers. And so uh, we are to remind people of what we believe, but if we charge them and we're angry uh, it'll be a ruin to them it won't won't be beneficial to them won't help them and so another example is not acting like a christian which builds on elena's falling into temptations if our morals fall if we're not being that example um, we have to live what we're going to preach mm -hmm. 
I mean, who wants to go listen to a preacher who is not living what they're preaching? And if we are actively trying to teach someone about the church and then we're like, hey, let's go to the bar Saturday night, they're not going to want to be any part of it because they're going to say, well, what's the difference in going to church and not if you, you just act like I do? And we talked about that in the last episode of being not conformed. We have to watch those things. We have to be that example. So look with me at First Peter. First Peter chapter 2, verse 12. It says, having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may, by your good works, which they observe, glorify God in the day of visitation. And so we need to have that honorable conduct, those good morals, those showing that we are different, a good kind of different. If we are constantly being good and positive and being that light, that true light, not a dull light, but a bright shining light that we're always happy and we don't let things get us down and we live the fruit of the spirit, then we're going to be a good example and they're going to want to be part of it. But if we're not, why would they want to be a part of it? And so my last example for things that hurt our influence is when we hurt our brothers or sisters in Christ, um, not being God's unified church. If we are going to church and we can't be positive and we're tearing other people down and we're just ranking on them all day. Like you shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't be doing that. That's not the attitude to keep people in Christ. We talk about getting people to Christ, but we have to keep people in Christ too. Um, if we're constantly being harmful to them, they're not going to want to stay in the church. Likewise, if we bring a visitor to church and they see how we're treating other people in the church, they might not want to be a part of the church. So it works both ways that we can't save souls if we're hurting souls. And so we have to think about those things when we're um, trying to show a good Christian influence rather than hurting our Christian influence. And, and overall, I want to reiterate God's unified church. If we're showing division, then why would they want to be a part of our church if we're not united and supportive of each other? And so now we're going to talk about things that help or build our Christian influence. So line the source off again. Um, one thing that's very important in building your influence is sharing God's word with others. And I'm going to read Ephesians 5 verses 8 through 9. And it says, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the, in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. So, I mean, once you share God's word, one thing that really makes my heart happy is seeing the outcomes of sharing his word. People, you know, coming back to you and saying, hey, thank you for sharing this with me. It's really changed my outlook on things and, you know, seeing people grow and become stronger Christians and stronger in their faith. That's one thing that really builds me up and makes me happy. And... Another thing for me is being a good example to especially younger girls because as a basketball player, as a Christian girl, I know that I have a lot of younger girls looking up to me. And so it's very important for me to be a good example because I know I'm having an influence on their lives. And so I want to read Titus 2 verses 3 through 5. And it says, The older woman likewise, that they be reverent in behavior, not stand, not slanders, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they admonish the young woman to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, homemakers, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be blasphemed. So there it's talking about older women are supposed to be a good example and influence younger girls to live the right way, to you know, be good wives in the house. And so that's important when you're trying to influence others. And then one last thing for me especially is just being caring and loving and supportive towards others. Like, you know, somebody might be struggling with something and just being there to listen to them and show them that you care about them and that you love them is very important. Because like for me personally, I like to be shown love. I like to be shown, hey, you're cared for. Like, you're not the only one going through this struggle. And so um, going, looking at John chapter 15, verses 12 through 13, it says, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. 
Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. <clears throat> so this is talking about Jesus' love towards us. And he's literally telling us to love others just like he loved us. And I don't know about you, but Jesus loved us with everything in him. He literally gave his life for us. So I think it's very important to, you know, show love and care and just support others as a Christian. And those are big parts of building our influence because if we can live out those ways, if people see us sharing God's word, that builds our influence. Mm -hmm. If people see us teaching younger girls, that builds our influence. If we're supportive to others, that builds our influence. Those are all great examples because if we're seen doing those things, people are going to look to us more as that influence rather than just thinking, oh, they're, they're a lukewarm mm -hmm. Christian. They're just kind of there. Or even worse, thinking that we're not an influence. And so those are great, great examples. And to build on them, I have a few myself as well. Um, my first one is living by example. And so that goes into when we're teaching those younger girls. It talks about doing it by example. But look with me at First Timothy chapter 4. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 12 says, Let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in word and conduct and love and spirit and faith and purity. And so all of those are by example. You know, you can't be an example if you're not living the example. And so by doing these things, it's one way to build our influence. Um, something like this. I know I was talking to Elena earlier and I said, if not me, then who? And we mm -hmm. need to have that attitude when we talk about reaching others, talking about being an influence, being an example. If I'm not going to do it, who's going to do it? Um, I didn't pull the verse for this, but talking about it, think about Esther, you know, for mm -hmm. such a time as this, if she wasn't going to get God's people through that time, God would have found a way. And we need to remember that, that if we're not going to be the one, God's going to find a way. It's up to mm -hmm. us to be part of his plan. And so doing that is living by example, um, being friendly, being friendly to others is one of the best ways to teach them about God. I've told you before in episodes, how my mom is a school teacher. Part of using her talents is while she can't bring God up first, um, she can be that example um, by her friendliness to her students that they can see what Christianity is supposed to look like. And so look with me at Proverbs chapter 18. Proverbs 18 verse 24 says, A man who has friends must himself be friendly, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. And so if we expect to have friends lean on us so that we're in a position to convert them, we have to also be friendly to them. I mean, we may not, earlier we talked about getting advice from others. We may not use those non-Christian examples to get advice from, but if we want them to lean on us and to get advice from us, we have to show them love, purity, kindness, all those things from that first verse. Um, we have to live out those ways so that as a friend, they'll want to lean on us. Um, going the extra mile, doing those little extra mm -hmm. things throughout life and our relationships within the church, um, those are things that build our influence. And so look with me at Matthew chapter 25. Matthew 25 verse 40 says, And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. And so this is when Jesus is speaking and he's talking about when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me drink. It's kind of like with the Good Samaritan, um, going that extra mile and helping someone when they're down, that can be the difference. Mm -hmm. That can save their soul. And that builds our influence. If we see someone walking down the street and we just keep our eyes straight and we just drive on by, um, they may recognize us and then they'll think, well, what a Christian they are to not help. Or, you know, we have to be mindful of what we're doing, not for the praise of men, but so that we are living a life Christ like the life that Christ wants us to live, just like he's talking about here. Um, when he's down and we do something, that's how we're treating him. If we have a friend who's down in life and we're not doing anything for them, we're not doing anything for Christ. So going the extra mile builds our influence, having calm discussions. And so we hit on this with um, things that hurt our influence and getting frustrated and blowing up, mm -hmm. but having those calm discussions, very understanding, very level playing field. No one's going to want to have a conversation about beliefs if they think you're going to sit there and be all, <laughs> oh, I don't know why you believe that, but I believe this. Like you need to be calm and chilled out. And if you 
have a discussion with them and they decide not to convert, it is not your fault, but you're not going to convert them with a hateful attitude. Mm -hmm. So you have to have the attitude of, I will love you even if we don't believe the same thing. I will love you as long as you just hear me out. That's all we need of them. That's all we should ever ask somebody is to hear us out. Mm -hmm. Because that's the first step and the steps of salvation is here. And so if they never hear, they're never going to do anything else. So look with me at 1 Peter chapter 3. Before I get too more excited, bang on the table. 1 <laughs> Peter chapter 3, um, verse 15 says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. And so part of that meekness, being calm and kind and respect to the Lord, first and foremost, but being ready for those conversations is just as important as being calm in those discussions. Because if we can't have a defense, if we don't know what we're going to talk about, we can be as calm as we want and nothing's going to come across. Mm -hmm. And so we have to be ready for them, but be calm in those conversations. And so I feel like we breezed through this one as well because we're already at the conclusion again. And so um, finishing out, I have a couple points. And first, uh, we're just going to start off with Philippians chapter 2, verse 15. Philippians 2, 15. And it says that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world. And so I will start by saying that is very, might sound very harsh at face value, crooked and perverse generation, but... Um, just as true as it was in Bible times when this was written, it's true today. And it's sad, but if you think about all the movements and the woke and this and that, it's it's all very immoral mm -hmm. and evil. And it is crooked and perverse. And as harsh as those are, I mean, sometimes we need something harsh to cut to us to get us to realize just how bad it is. And so in all of this, the point is, we are lots in the world. We are to shine as lots in the world. And so we need to embrace that, embrace our influence as lots, our example as lots. And I'll never forget, I went to PTP in what is 2022. I almost forgot what year it was. <laughs> in 2022, and we had a college lesson, a college age lesson, and it was about evangelism in your college years. And he said, you know, we need to convert while the foundation is still being laid. This is the best time for us to be an influence. The best time for us to reach other people is while that concrete is still loose. Because if it hardens up and people get to the age of 50, 60, 70, they're not always as willing to change their entire life for it. Um, even in their 30s and 40s, 40s and 50s, whenever mm -hmm. people start getting, I'll tell you one of the hardest things to do is convert someone after their parents have passed away. Because when their parents have passed away, it will always be hard for them to believe in something with the thought that they may not ever see that family mm -hmm. member again. And if we can convert people while they're still young, and think about with college, like it's oh, their yeah. first time away from home outside of their parents' house. I mean, what better a time to work? And for me personally, like, you know, they're not at home, like you said, for their parents to influence them, like, hey, this is actually the truth. But they're also, like, for me, like, personally, I'm, like, wanting to learn more and more because, like, I want to know it for myself. You know, I've been raised up in the church, but I've never really, you know, went out and studied, like, hey, this is, you know, this is actually the truth. And just on my own, just studying on my own, it's really, like, you know, influenced me to just study more and learn more and also share it with my friends. And a lot of my friends have asked me, have come to me and asked me these questions. And so, you know, I just, I think it's a very good opportunity and good time to share the truth with them. And if you think about it, um, where I go to college at, there's a lot of people who are local. Where Elena goes to college at, there's people from all over oh, the world. Yeah. <laughs> they're not yes. 20 minutes away from mom and dad where they're outside of their parents' house where they can still run back. If you catch people when they have no idea where anything is, no idea where they want to go to church, grab them. Like, mm -hmm. hey, come with me. Like, be that influence because they are looking. They have a capacity to be influenced. Mm -hmm. 
And so that's a big deal. Um, now let's look at Titus chapter 2. Just to finish out, again, this is part of the conclusion. Titus chapter 2, verse 8. It says, Sound speech that cannot be condemned, that one who is an opponent may be ashamed, having nothing evil to say of you. And so when we think about being lots in our example, um, part of that is being so conscient, conscious, 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 Conscious. Yeah, that being so aware, yeah. <laughs> or the aware, yes. being so aware of our speech, our actions, um, beyond our influence, but our example, being aware of that and having a mindset of not giving someone anything bad to say about you. That is part of our influence. That's part of how we can reach others. Um, if we get to that point where no one can say anything bad about us, um, that's what it's all about. We are to live like Christ lived and they could only make up false things about Christ. They never had anything valid um, to say about him negative. They had to pay people to lie. And so that's the mindset we should have is to be aware that if we are living so righteously like Christ, then people can't say anything negative about us and not so that we can have our nose up in the air or think we're better than everybody, but just so our influence is not damaged by the sin that we partake in. And so thinking about that, thinking about being examples, we need to remember that we may be the only Bible, Bible that someone sees. Throughout college, we may be the only chance. So one class with one person at one time, that may be their only chance of becoming a Christian. And we have to have that mindset. It's so serious and it's so uncomfortable. Like you don't, walk into college like, I'm going to convert everybody here. That's not the mindset that you'd naturally have. The natural mindset, worldly man, human mindset is, I'm going to stay in my little bubble and I'm not going to get in trouble and I'm not going to make anybody upset. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that. We have to remember that if we, say you get a roommate or you're living in a dorm with someone you've never met, I mean, that is the perfect opportunity. Can you imagine living with someone for even a semester, even all four years, and never having the conversations and waking up in judgment knowing that you were the person who didn't get them there? And it is so serious and so heavy, but that's what we have to remember is, would you rather be uncomfortable for 10 minutes or be confident that you saved someone's soul? We have to be prepared, I think, you know, for me, I've had people come to me and ask me questions and I'm like, I don't know. Like, that is a great question. And it's hurt me and like to know that I didn't have an answer for them. And, you know, I think that's another big reason why I've like got into studying so much is so I can be prepared. And if somebody comes to me with a question, I'm like, here you go. Here it is. You know, open your Bible and here it is. And that could save a soul, like you said. Mm -hmm. And so, again, just remember, we are walking Bibles. Everything we do every day, everything that shows our influence, every way that we influence other people, we are walking Bibles. And so, in following Christ's example and being examples and being walking Bibles, I'm going to close with this question. What message is your Bible sending? Thank you. And I hope that you have enjoyed this four episode influencer series. I have enjoyed having someone else here with me and not having to do all the talking. <laughs> and I hope that you got to see a little bit of a different perspective of someone who's involved in more things in a different area of the state. And I just hope it's been beneficial to you. Thank you.